Hello everyone, I'm Brahmithra. This will be the third part, uh, the third video for the Wave 4, all of the expansions. <laughs> um, it's going to be a long video. This video will have cuts in it for sure. Uh, the best way I could think about doing this was just to do each one and or because I need to go over a lot of updates. There's all these Wave 4 expansions all have been in different updates and they all have, some of them have their own updates. So instead of opening up all those things all into different windows and then talking about them all going through, what I just think is the best way to do it is to just do the one, do a cut, open up everything else for the next expansion, get that all ready, then talk about that expansion, stop again, do that next one, stop again, next one. It's just easier than do it all in a big long row. So, um, also, while I was getting ready for this, just thinking, you know, when you have a second to stop and think about things, um, just to be clear, more clear, we just got done talking about the Gambler's Chest and Campaigns of Death, and why I think that if you were a new person who did not back the Kickstarter. First, I want to clarify what it was that I, I meant when I said that if you back the Kickstarter and you bought 1.5 at the regular old just pledge level, it was $350 when that pledge level included the core and 1.5. And I said for new, for people who backed the Kickstarter, they basically were going to get Gambler's Chest for free. Which is technically accurate, but it's also an inaccurate statement. It's you could have just gotten during the during the Kickstarter, you could have gotten 1.5 by itself for two hundred dollars. And then you could have added the gambler's chest for $150, which would be a total of $350, which is just about the same as to what it costs if you buy Kingdom Death just 1.5, the 1.6 pre-order is was 325 or 350 i forget what it is so in essence if you were on the kickstarter and you went for the uh kingdom death 1.5 with the gambler's chest which was the basic pledge level the ones that weren't limited some of, there were other ones that were limited like the black friday package or black lantern some early birds there were early birds and stuff some were limited numbers so the unlimited number that included 1.5 and Gamma's Chest was 350. That's the same price as how much it is to just buy Kingdom Death 1.6 off the shop. So technically, I was wrong when I said you get the Gamma's Chest for free. It was you got them at a severe discount that made them the price equivalent of just the base game. So, I, I just want to clarify that. You, you do not get the Gambler's Chest for free. You were paying for it. It was $200 for the base game, $150 for Gambler's Chest, which makes $350. If you buy Kingdom Death 1.6 just off the shop, it's $350. So, then you would then now, in my opinion, you would then now need to purchase the Gambler's Chest. So, uh, it, it's, it sucks for those people. I just want to clarify that. The other thing I just wanted to clarify was um, why I said to buy King or Campaigns of Death even if you don't own any of the other expansions, um, which would be the shortage. As I said, there, there could be a, an, a time where there is a, sor a shortage. Um, and I, I said that if you were to buy... When I, when I make these recommendations for people, uh, I was basing... In my head, when I originally started this video, I wanted to get it out in time for Black... Like, not on Black Friday, obviously, because I... Look, I only have... Things I'm going through right now, I only have so much free time. I wasn't, I'm never going to get this up at the same exact time. It's currently Saturday when I'm doing this. Uh, and then, hopefully, I can get this edited. I doubt it. This whole three-part thing, I was going to originally do it in one video. It's not going to happen. Um, so, in my mind, my mindset when I started saying some of these things was... Look, if you're looking to go into Backer Kit while Black Friday's open, and you're looking forward to the future of Wave 4, I was only saying of the available things, which were, you know, promos, some Wanderers, 
pinups, that was wave three, the card pack, um, and then the things you could add would be wave four, campaigns of death, and gambler's chest. Of those things, gambler's chest is what you should be adding, first off, before you even think about adding any wave four. Then it should be, um, Campaigns of Death, in my opinion, before you even think about adding Wave 4. That was why I said Campaigns of Death is important. If you're a brand new, brand new player, and you're just buying 1.6, I would then buy the Gambler's Chest. Still, that is, I still feel that way. Um, you could then buy original expansions, um, because those work fine. As of right now, I use them right now, and I don't have Campaigns of Death, so it would be wrong for me to suggest that you could never buy those uh, to put campaigns of death before the other expansions the original 12 expansions um you could buy any of them any of them that you wanted uh, with the exception of the green armor i would not buy green armor as your first one never i wouldn't buy green armor as my second one i wouldn't buy green armor as my third my fourth my fifth i think it takes seven expansions for green armor to even be built so with the exception of green armor, all the other 11 are perfectly fine. You could buy you could buy 1.6, and then if you wanted to have something just right then and there, you could buy any of those 11 green armor excluded. Um, so I was not ranking Campaigns of Death over the original Wave 1 expansions, or the original uh, Kickstarter expansions. I, I meant, and at this moment in time, what's available on the backer kit, what is available on the shop, moving forward um those would be the things i'd prioritize if you were on a budget if you're not on a budget then this game is a smorgasbord of analysis paralysis and buy whatever you want if you're if you're not on a budget this is like a this is a wet dream for someone who doesn't have a budget <laughs> you can buy whatever you want who cares you can buy if you're gonna buy it all i like i said i there's things i will even go over right now that i feel are actually you're just gonna save money if you if you were backed in the Kickstarter, if you went wild in the Kickstarter, don't feel bad about that. If you bought all that stuff in the Kickstarter, you're prob you're gonna save tons of money. So don't feel bad about that at all. Wasn't trying to say that. Um, just as I was pulling the stuff up for these expansions, getting ready to make the third part of this now, um, I was thinking about what it was I had just said, and I just want to clarify that. I do feel new players should definitely go 1.6. Gambler's Chest. Then, 1.6. And then if you're thinking about buying Wave 4, I would think perhaps either you just stick to Wave 4 stuff, or you should really consider buying Campaigns of Death before you even go back and look at those other things. Because if you have no expansions and you're just getting into the game now, I still think that if you were to buy Campaigns of Death, it's granted you won't be able to use all of it, but say you were to buy Campaigns of Death, it's it's not that much, and you get the Ancient Butcher in there, you get all this Infant Sun Soccer stuff, all those things, you don't need to use all of it. I think there's like a, um, a thought where if you buy Campaigns of Death, you should have every all those other expansions to really utilize it to its fullest. I don't agree with that at all. I think at, at its price point, just getting the Ancient Butcher, getting some pattern cards, getting an Infant Sunstalker, getting all those extra sculpts, people of the land. If you were to buy Campaigns of Death and then just buy Sunstalker, that will make the Sunstalker, People of the Stars so much better because there's an early Katana in there. It might even upgrade and fix that campaign there's a lot of things in campaigns of death that you could piecemeal together and i feel you'd be very happy with it um and even with campaigns of death i think you could just use the node system for fun even with the core and the gambler's chest um because you have to remember wave four is not coming i don't think wave four is going to come anytime soon which is a real shame and i'll get we'll, we'll touch right into that right away i don't think all of it's a shame i don't i, I don't think I'm not, also, I think in, the, in what I just said might have come off as me saying that I hate the delays, which I do for certain things. I don't think First Hero should have been delayed. There's really nothing there, and I don't think campaigns should have been, campaigns of death should have been really delayed. Um, 
It feels odd to prioritize getting the gambler's chest out before those things. And I don't care. I The quality of Wave 4 is going to be awesome. And I really do... I, I don't mind the the wait for it. I, I don't care. If it takes another two, three, four years, I don't I don't really care that much. I mean, I will care if it does take let's say it takes another three or four years from now. That'd be eight years total to get all this stuff out. And if that stuff comes out with the same problems as Spidicules and Dung Beetle Knight and Lonely Tree, then it's kind of concerning because it took eight years. Like that that is kind of concerning. But as it is right now, I, I, I don't want to just say, oh, he needs to rush and get this stuff out. I think he'll if he is really taking his time and the quality is going a lot higher than what it was in the original expansions, I think it is well worth it. So I didn't I also don't want to if if any if some of the things I said like an hour ago were sounding like I was really hammering on the delays. No, I I'm mainly just the first hero in gamblers or first hero in campaigns of death because those really help core problems that are current problems right now. Um, like, well, I'll get into it with First Hero. It's the very first one I'm going to talk about. So, uh, hopefully that clears that up. I, I Sometimes, you know, I, I just recorded those two things back to back. And, you know, two hours, three hours of talk, thinking things through in my head. What I'm going to say. And, and it might have come off ranty. I don't want it to. Um... Hopefully also with these breaks that I'm going to take from doing in between all of these expansions, maybe it will be a clearer, slowed down thought process, which is what I should have done. Again, uh, I'm getting, I am new to doing these long, free spoken things, but I, a lot of people do them. <laughs> so I'm learning as I go, and I think maybe that's why people always did chops up. I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of when people like chop up when you can tell that there's cuts, but that's just maybe because I'm, I'm a huge cinema buff too for films and stuff. I don't like chop, 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 chop. As people are talking, it makes it seem like what they're saying is not what they meant to say and they're cutting it out. And it appears, you know, they're making it only so the perfect stuff gets put on camera. Uh, I'm open to make mistakes. I'm open to get downvoted. That's fine. I don't care. You can disagree with me. It's it's healthy to disagree with people. It's healthy to have a debate. And I'm learning as I do this. Maybe I will do it forward, moving forward, if people like it. So, uh, yeah, with a fresher mind, I got to take away, I took a drink of something, you know, fresher mind, get water. And I thought about what I had just said, and I don't want that to come off that way. Um, but I do want to stress that I do feel it is kind of crappy what happened with Campaigns of Death. And I will talk about it in Wave 4. But it does really appear that Campaign... The, not Campaigns of Death. The Gambler's Chest will be essential regardless moving forward or backwards. The systems in there look like they're going to take over what is Kingdom Death. And that kind of sucks for people who didn't get a Kickstarter now need to rely on the store because that will, that is a huge boost. That is making this, even the... See, that's, I don't want to say it again. The Kingdom Death's fine. I love Kingdom Death Monster 1.6. You could get 1.6 now and have super fun with it. But to make an essential expansion to the game, $300 as well as having a $300 base game is kind of crappy. Um, so, let's talk about First Hero. First hero is also, I'm going to talk about these in order that they are on the Kickstarter. So if you wanted to go to Kickstarter, just go to campaign. Let me sh I'll switch to it now. Yeah, so if you wanted to go to Kickstarter, go to campaign. I'm just literally going to scroll down these, do them in order, and talk about them in the order they are. Oh yeah, here's what I, here, see. Um, this is what I backed. Like I said, I didn't back, I didn't go overborn, overblown on getting one of the, like, Sanchin. Saint, Satan pledges or whatever. So I I really did. I honestly only did just get 1.5 in the gamble chest and see it was 350, which is the same price as just 1.6 now. Or near to it. I forget if it's 325 or 350. But anyway, here's the first hero. Now originally, first hero, which is now going to be wave 4, and I really wish this was wave 3. I hope that he throws this in with gamblers or campaigns of death. 
Because Campaigns of Death is also not coming as Gambler's Chest. Gambler's Chest is coming first, then uh, Campaigns of Death. And I really think First Hero should be involved in that. Um, just because of what it does. So here is First Hero. Here is the original pitch. Uh, it wasn't even pitched in an update. This was just right... This is right on the campaign. As you can see, I'm not in updates or anything. This is listed right on the campaign. See? Um... So, in the first Hero expansions, players take the role of four veteran survivors who had no settlement to call their own. They find and invade a settlement where they face the first hero, a survivor so powerful they do all the hunting by themselves. The purpose of the expansion is to help players start more advanced campaigns at Lantern Year 12 or 20. Uh, instead of simply provi providing complicated rules to generate later settlements, your showdown with the first hero will create the advanced settlement that you could take over. So, what is year 12 and year 20? Year 20 is, and even would appear to be moving forward, where the, where the core monster would be. So, this would be where you fight the gambler in the Gambler's Chess campaign. This is where you fight the Watcher, you have the in people on Lantern. Year 20 is a very big year, so... It's good that year 20 is chosen. Nineteen year 12 also replaces the hand. So, uh, it will be weird. So I hope these are going to be their own expansion. I'm pretty sure they're, I mean, not their own, their own timeline. They're not going to just be thrown into an existing timeline. It appears that why I think this should come with gamblers, or campaigns of death, sorry. Sometimes I'm going to say that sometimes I might not catch it all the time. Why I think this should be included with the Campaigns of Death is because this actually is awesome for a randomness and node system. Once you take over one of these campaigns after Lantern Year 20, remember, you're, you're not bogged down. The, one of the weaknesses I just talked about with the node system is there's not very many prologue. Even he, Poots pointed this out in his own, like, uh, as we went through the updates of that. The node system is problematic because the, he was expecting the Ancient Butcher... Or well, because where he's releasing campaigns of death, he was like, "Oh, the ancient butcher! You can't! I can't just have this show up all the time everywhere." Uh, so I need to include other stuff in the campaigns of death, which is great. Which is also another reason why I think it's just awesome. I mean, you get the Beetle Baron, or Tom. It's Tom's picture, but Beetle Baron. You get the Devil Slenderman. You do get these other things in there that I really do think, if you were to buy it with 1.6 and campaigns of death, just those two, I think you would find a way to utilize it. It's not the first time. See, there's there's some things where you're, where people could say, or it's not the first time that you buy an expansion and you don't use all of it. Even right now, um, I've I didn't mention this last time, but I meant to. It just got lost in my mind, or all the things I was saying got lost when I was talking. But there are currently things that are not used. Uh, campaigns of the tyrant. Campaigns of death could find a way to give you a node for the tyrant. The tyrant is literally only used in the people of the uh, stars that's it and in people of the stars you don't ever really fight the dragon king he's the he's the you know like the finale monster so all that quarry stuff so even those old expansions have dual purpose expansions and i think campaigns of death if you were to buy 1.6 and campaigns of death you would you could find a way to use it it would be you i think you'd be fine with it and just even, you know, running the people that Mirror Stone, where you just replace Gold Smoke Knight, you're doing yourself a huge benefit. <laughs> At least you'd have some kind of story that's scripted to the, you know, hey, look, we're living in this one place. So I think Campaigns of Death is still great, but yeah, I could open to the to people's, you know, waiting, awaiting comments. I'm sure there's going to be, all, why are you suggesting Campaigns of Death over any of the other expansions? Why would you suggest that, even without purchasing any other original expansions. Yeah, I could see that. So this is why I think First Hero should be should be included. This doesn't First Hero doesn't fit into Wave 4. It it's gonna feel bad getting First Hero in the Wave 4. Not not feel bad. I'll be so happy to get it in during Wave 4. Okay, yeah, so spoilers, I I backed the first hero. I, I I bought this one. This was one of the ones I got as soon as Pledge Manager over right away. Here's why I think this will feel bad when you get it during Wave 4. I'll get First Hero. I really want to use First Hero now. 
because it fixes problems. I don't. Sometimes you don't want to play year one through twelve. Uh, I was just talking in uh, Discord with people about how I would like to play Tom, but you know, my current campaign is not set up to fight him. Or maybe I want to just fight some lion gods, but I, I'm not set up to fight them. I didn't. I didn't play correctly to fight Tom and stuff like that. But if I had first hero, I could be like, hey, let's just start Lantern Year Twenty. Forget the Watcher. Then I'm not. Then you're not constrained or contained, confined. Ah, constraints aren't put on you to only level fight level level three things. You could go, hey, let's start Lantern Year Twenty. Let's do. Uh, we'll start the Tom event. Because it takes five years to build towards Tom. We'll start so we'll start Lantern Year 20. I'll just introduce we'll we'll do the stuff to get Tom, and then we'll fight Tom. And we'll do that all before, you know, we're already in Lantern Year 20. It's something you could just do. Same thing with Lantern Year 12. This this feels good to have now, and I don't see why it's delayed. When when I get it in wave four, sadly, there's so much other stuff in Wave 4 I'm going to want to play. I'm going to want to, uh, hopefully, well, not hopefully, I, I know this. People are probably going to download me for this or say whatever, but I don't think Wave 4 is coming anytime soon. I think I'm going to be able to play through the Gambler's Chest completely. Gambler's Chest probably again, and then probably some Campaigns of Death. I think I'll be able to do camp Gambler's Chest campaign maybe twice. And, and when I say when I, when I think I can do it, I say when I probably could record it, too. I'm thinking I could probably record it twice, maybe not twice, once. I bet I can get through the entire Gamble Chest, upload it on YouTube and everything before I even get Campaigns of Death. Then I think I could do all of those Campaigns of Death things and record them because some of them are, two of them were five years and then, then you have three 20-year ones. I think I could do all five of them before I even see Wave 4. Then when Wave 4 comes, there's a whole bunch of stuff I'm not going to want to do for his hero. I'm just not going to want to. It's going to just be shelved somewhere and then be like, man, I, maybe I'll try it. Maybe. But you know what? I really want to do this prologue for this new monster or this prologue or to do this. I want to try some nodes with all this new stuff. Oh, I want to do all this new stuff. Oh, I'm going to try this new stuff. Oh, I'm going to play this new campaign. This entire thing. There's like five full campaigns in uh, Wave 4. So to, for, to first hero get tangled up in all that, it's going to just be like, why? You know what I mean? The Wave 4 stuff's not set for you to skip through it with with first hero skipping stuff is what you want to do after you've done it so to release it with wave four why would you skip all this new content that you're buying in wave four why would you want to skip all that this this is the perfect remedy for a game that's already five years old people don't want to do that stuff now first hero is a perfect perfect thing for that first first hero was supposed to come out with it was supposed to be wave three it was supposed to be what you got right away. It was supposed to be one of those things, it was always said it was going to be one of those things you get before anything else. Which it should have been. So, that's what it is. We'll talk about it a little bit more. I've already said that I've gotten it. I I don't know if it's essential anymore now that it's pushed back to wave 4. So I don't know if it's a good idea to back it. I think it is, for what it is, I think it's great and awesome. Um... Yeah, because you, like I said, you can jump into Lantern Year 12, Lantern Year 20. So you get these four survivors. That's what you're going to start with. Let's read through this. Uh, in the first year expansions, pick, they take the role of four veteran survivors who have no settlement to call their own. They find an invade settlement. Yeah. So the showdown with the first hero introduces a new mechanic wherein survivors can attack and destroy the first hero weapons and items. Unfortunately, once you've destroyed a weapon, it is removed from the settlement storage, which you are about to inherit. Instead, players can attempt to fight without ruining their potential plunder, but run a risk of losing their experienced survivors. This expansion will include new story events and settlement events themed around invading around invaders killing a settlement's hero and what outcomes the newcomers might face, like being murdered in their sleep. Overall, shaping up to be a famous a fantastic expansion lets you jump into a mid or end game content with a fun emerging story. There's one of the renders. I 100% agree with all that pitch. Let's go to the next. So here's the render of the first. So another render. This is from a later update. Here's that same render again. Here's one of the other of the four uh, survivors you'll start with. Here's the other of the four you'll start with. Because remember, you're going to be four survivors that invade a settlement. So you're not going to have just those regular old naked survivors. You're not going to build any of these survivors. This is going to be like a vignette, I assume. This is going to be like a vignette um, with pre-built 
characters where you're going to fight. This is the level 12 one. The male is the level 12. Let's go to the next update. So yes, yeah, so here's the uh, female first hero. If you want to campaign to skip right to Lantern Year 20, it'll be the female first hero you decide to face. It's decided to make them the stronger of the pair, obviously. He always makes... No, I'm not surprised that the stronger of the pair would be women. He loves that. Not surprising. So here's the female render, the first hero. Uh, I think that was all that was there. Uh, first hero is the, the most recent up-to-date information. Uh, I'll be careful with my words to avoid spoilers, but the first hero is really developing into a cool character in the world of Kingdom Death. A settlement with the first hero at its helm really doesn't need anyone else to hunt or defend them, so the hero carries the settlement's armory with them. This working, this working out... Again, I'm just going to read it the way he says it. <laughs> Sometimes this stuff sounds really weird when you read it out loud because he chooses weird words. Uh... So it sounds weird. It might be grammatically correct, but it just sounds weird when you read it aloud. This working out to be a pretty lore-rich campaign as we explore the veterans, the settlement they originated from, and how the first hero came to be. The entire tale, of course, will be served to you in a variety of intriguing slices. Again, just, just reading it the way it's written. All the hard plastic turned out phenomenal, too. The names of the veteran survivors are just project names. Their actual names will be the ones you give them. So again, here's the female. Female first hero, looking awesome. Looking really cool. I don't know the base size on this, but I would assume that they're a normal survivor base, but you never know. Maybe they have a, like the butcher. Uh, there's the male rendered. Looks really cool. So, uncrowned King of Arms traits. At the end of the monster's turn, perform re-equip and the basic action in that specific order. Re-equip. If there is no equipment in play, put a random one into play. If there is no equipment left, nothing happens. So here's some equipment. This is Zambato. This is a weapon. Places the basic action, attack profile, with this. Oh, so there, it shows. He, the, they are 2 by 2 uh, Speed 2, action 3 plus, 5 damage. So, this is the Let Lantern Year 21, that's why it's so strong. After damage, bleed, knockback 6. So, that's a huge attack radius. <laughs> but anyway, so very cool. Artwork for the first hero. Here's the first hero, hard plastic. This is Sonia, Simon, Sophia, Samer. <laughs> uh, there's the artwork. So they're all going to have their own gear. Very cool. Again, their own gear. I'm assuming it's going to be complete sets. I don't know exactly if you'll be able to craft them or whatever. So, very cool. Let's go back to the original pitch, which I think is up here. Just to see what is included. Again, this is just right on the campaign thing. I know it's like one of the first ones. Because, like I said, it wasn't part, it wasn't a, it was just launched right with the campaign when the campaign launched. Oh my gosh, so much stuff. Keep going up. There it is. Add on menu. So, first hero. So, content pitch. Okay, so you get the one, so there's two first hero miniatures now. So, it's one for the Lantern Year 12, one for the Lantern Year 20. You get the four miniatures, the veteran, the survivors. Uh, one rule book, five full page illustrations. Don't know what that means. I, I don't know if that, like the when you read the prologues or like the story events for expansions, they usually you turn the page. The writing's only on the one side, and then this whole other page is art. I don't know exactly what that means. Eighty game cards, which I'm assuming would be the hit locations and the AI deck, that would pretty much cover most of the game cards. Uh, Twenty gear cards. So I'm assuming those are the four. Uh, they might, I, if he's gonna, I mean, it's been so long now, I would I would hope that those original four veteran survivors just have their own vignette cards, like the ones that you get in the Giga Lion and stuff. They just have their own vignette cards, that, you know, the gear grid with them already printed on. It kind of sucks, because in the vignette, he was not the best at making the layout, some of the gear, he didn't have the affinities, but, I don't know, it doesn't matter, I'd rather that than to have to set it, well, who cares, 
so 20 gear cards, I'm assuming that's the five gear set for each uh, person that is in that. Um, one settlement location, which is neat, means that it's not going to be confined. There's probably going to be a rules, maybe, perhaps, to use it in the old campaigns, but I doubt it. I think this will just be its own thing. It just lets you accelerate faster into the Lantern years. Um, because it'd be kind of weird, so, I don't know, you replace, like, the hand, and people with Lantern, you replace the hand at, Lan at Lantern Year 12, and then what? Then you just continue on as normal. They're they're in a Watcher settlement, I guess. Uh, but when you replace, so the Lantern Year 21, you'd be replacing the Watcher. So then what, do you only play those final nine years to you fight the Gold Smoke Knight, I guess? Maybe? Depending on the timeline? But, um... Or what do you just trigger the Watcher at 25? Don't know. Need to think about uh, two settlement events. Cool. Hopefully they're not settlement event specific. Hopefully you could shuffle these in. Maybe there's ways to trigger. The other thing with First Hero is, um, I think I was mentioned this some of the other times, uh, with the Phoenix, the time resetting for the Phoenix and stuff, I'm not a huge fan of time resetting, but um, I think that'd be a cool way to incorporate First Hero thematically. Have those veteran survivors be ones that were just fighting a phoenix and they lost their way with clinging mist or what is it? One of the ones you could you could reset after phoenix. I forget what it is. Anyway, that'd be a neat way to explain at least clinging mist. So you know when you go to reset, instead of just abandoning your settlement, you just have those ones work that somehow, some way into becoming those would be the veteran survivors that fight the first hero when they go on to find a new settlement. So they're just resetting, starting in Lantern Year 1 again. Because um, I, I don't like that, but it is a tactic for things. You do need to reset sometimes to even fight Tom and stuff like that. But I think that'd be cool. So now here's, I'm just going to say this. I just want to, we're just going to get this right now. Wave 4, all right? The Gambler's Chest, if it is 100% essential, this stuff right here is either going to make... It's going to make or break with these Wave 4 expansions. It's either going to... Something's either going to happen, people are going to be either upset about it, or Wave 4 expansions are going to just get bloated. Really bloated. So, the reason why I say that, this includes six Fighting Arts and two Disorders. Perfect for the game as it is right now. Not perfect since this is now coming out after the uh, Gambler's Chest. So there's no Ark Survivors, no Philosophies included with any of this stuff. All, you know, that's it. This pitch is perfect for the game as it currently is now, which is why this should come out earlier. Should be out. Now, I'm not saying come out before the Gambler's Chest. I'm saying comes out with Campaigns of Death. Because that way, the other Wave 4 expansions, I'm hoping they are going to include Scout Reports. They are going to include Philosophies. They're going to include Nodes system stuff. This first hero, as pitched, works currently in the game as it is now. So, it's a whole different game coming with the, with the Gambler's Chest. Wave 4 should be a whole different thing. So, this shouldn't fit. It fits now. Otherwise, this first hero expansion needs to have some stuff in it. Philosophy, stuff, art, way to make arc survivors. It's going to need to change. So, I know, obviously, everything's subject to change here. But, this is the one thing that I was fine with being pitched. And I don't even think it needs to be... You wouldn't even need to, like, edit it to make it future-proof. Because why would you have a scouting report on some thing you just stumbled across? That's why I think this is fine with the old system. The way this is pitched, just release it earlier. Just release it with Campaigns of Death. So, um, the other ones I'm fine with waiting and having all that new scout report stuff. I'm fine with it. This one, it would just be weird to have scout report, all those other things added. But it should, now that you're, you've committed to releasing it Wave 4, this should have the Wave 4 stuff. Same rules should apply. All right, scrolling down, next we will have... Uh, I'm not going to talk about pinups and stuff. And I'm not going to talk about Gambler's Chest again. I'm not going to talk about pinups. Pinups are whatever. 
Let's see what the next one is, and then it will go. Uh, next one is Nightmare Ram. All right, let me pull up all the stuff for Nightmare Ram. Nightmare Ram is a new expansion. So I said, like I said, if you want to follow along, here's everything that it includes. So you get one Nightmare Ram miniature. Uh, actually, would us open up it. So here's the actual thing. New expansion. This is an expansion. And thus is included in the Gambler's Lantern Pledges and Satan Lantern Pledges. So those are the ones I was talking about, where if you bought those, yeah, obviously those are great deals. You're saving huge amounts of money because everything's probably going to go up. Uh, some already has. I've talked about Campaigns of Death going up. The plastic board went from $100 to $200. Uh, I predict two more. So four total. Two more expansions are going to see huge price hikes. I, 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 I know it, it will. Uh, I'll talk about them here, but so this is Nightmare Ram. Nightmare Ram, interestingly, has been being worked on a long time. Nightmare Ram, uh, even the original Kickstarter, Nightmare Ram had uh, stuff designed for it and playtest pictures during the original Kickstarter before even the original one finished. So this guy's been working on, being worked on for a long time, Nightmare Ram has. Nightmare Ram, interestingly, is also in the back of the rule book. In the little comic, um, forget what her name is, Aya's comic. So, the night she's Nightmare Ram is in there. I'm almost positive Nightmare Ram is in there. So, uh, interesting, neat, very cool. So, this expansion, and thus, uh, where is it? Anyone else can answer the rewards waiting $40 in front of their pledge. So, uh, this is the Nightmare Ram, very neat looking. This is its, you know, crest. The Nightmare Ram is a living spawn of a parasitic plant. It subsists on the salt of creatures which it metabolizes to, po to power the glowing bulbs that grow atop its tough horns and the large lantern organ on it and the large la lantern organ on it carries outside its body. Okay, there are they are sensitive, lonesome creatures that carefully cultivate beautiful hidden gardens containing the plants that cult cultivate beautiful hidden gardens containing the plants that produce them. They will often beat trespassers into a pulp and use them as salt-rich fertilizer. Like any fruit that has been picked, their lifespan is short. Nightmare Ram and its claustrophobic garden dungeon function together to make one utterly insane fight. Survivors will be the uh, impaled, I'm assuming it's written not written correctly. Uh, rained into spikes, crushed in avalanches, and get doused with boiling water from the boiling water bug minions, of course. Nightmare Ram has its full control of its garden dungeon and will often rearrange it during and often rearrange it during the showdown. Survivors risk being buried alive in the inverted mountain. This expansion adds something totally new to Kingdom of Death Monster, a dungeon. It includes a dungeon deck, dungeon tiles, minion spawning cards, and more. Get ready to die in a whole new way. So, um, what was the name of that? Uh, Warhammer Quest. If you've played Warhammer Quest, I've played Warhammer Quest. That was a dungeon spawning randomization with cards. You draw random cards and roll on the dice and it would randomly fill and generate a dungeon for you to crawl. <laughs> uh, that's an old game, Warhammer Quest. Uh, there's not, not talking the new one. Maybe the new one plays like that. I don't know anything about the new one. I'm talking about the original Warhammer Quest from like the early 90s. Um, I still have it. It is great. And that's how it is. You just draw a card, generates a dungeon tile, Put the door on it, roll a dice, look at the table, generates it with Warhammer minions. Uh, awesome. That that game, Warhammer Quest, was way above its time, way ahead of its time for board gaming. Um, since it was Warhammer made, you actually had Warhammer Fantasy. All those minions were inside this huge roleplay book that you got. And the tables were just super vast because anything in all of Warhammer Fantasy you, you could just generate and would have stats. Uh, it was awesome. So I'm assuming that's how this is going to be. So the content pitch, subject to change as we finalize developments. So you get the Nightmare Ram, four narrative sculpture alpine armor survivors, eight boiling water bug minions, 26-page rulebook, 
I don't know how he knows exactly from 26 pages. One weapon mastery, uh, one armor more, set card, 35 gear cards, 30 AI cards, one basic action card, eight dungeon cards, five disorders, eight dungeon resources, 16 treasure cards, 12 dungeon tiles, four egg charge cards, eight fighting arts, 16 hit location, eight hunt events, um, three innovations, 13 minion cards, five rare gear cards, 17 monster resources, one settlement location, five secret fighting arts, and three terrain cards. There's the Nightmare Ram. There it is. This was even, I think this might even be one of the pictures from the original Kickstarter. Um, yeah, you can see here Nightmare Ram with its dungeon. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, so I think that's the end of the pitch. And then let's go Nightmare Ram expansion. I fear I may have misled you. This is from one of the later updates. At Gen Con, in Con, uh, Gen Con interview in quotation marks. No, the original pitch was misleading as well. Uh, it's true, the Nightmare Ram itself is not part of the Dungeon Crawl anymore. So that whole Dungeon Crawl mechanic, it was given to the... another monster, another expansion we're talking about. But that's because it's been moved to its own boss room. The Dungeon Crawl portion leading up to the Ram still exists, but now it replaces most of the Hunt phase. Uh, the survivors will work their way through the Ram's Dungeon dealing with boiling water bugs on their way to confront it. Now, I couldn't find this again, but I think in, respo in responses, this, these water bugs and stuff might also now become encounters. So, let me just... Everything here is speculation and opinion from here on going forward about these things. It is entirely possible Everything is going to change. Everything from here on is just speculation. I'm not saying I have no insider information. I have no idea of anything about how any of this stuff will work. I can only speculate. It would make sense for the boiler, for these boiler, uh, what are they? Boiling water bugs to become an encounter. He has that whole encounter system. It would suck if... You need the gambler's chest to get those encounter boards and the encounter thing. If any encounter moving forward requires the gambler's chest, that will suck. Not saying that they will. Um, not saying that they should. Saying if they do, uh, that will suck. Not for people who back the Kickstarter and stuff. Again, this just this just goes out to the people. We're buying 1.6 from the store and are looking at these things to maybe add in future Black Fridays and stuff. Just be cautious that these Wave 4 expansions might require Gambler's Chest. I'm not saying that they will. It, it sounds like maybe all of this stuff will be included in this expansion by itself. So that's possible. Um... We defined, uh, we found the design space that combined both at the same time was not allowing us to make the Nightmare Ram or elements of the dungeon strong enough, so we made them both their own more distinct, more exciting pieces. So this, again, still just the Nightmare Ram. Nothing has changed at all, really. This is just hard plastic, I think, now instead of... So here's the Nightmare Ram's boss room. Still the same concept where you get thrown out of the, the you know, with the boiling water. This is still the same concept... Um, here's the boiling water bugs. Here's the Nightmare Ram dungeon. This looks a lot more like accustomed, akin to uh, Warhammer Quest, where you're just getting like two or three wide hallways and you just walk down them and just turn them into like chunky salsa. Chunky salsa is considered like when you fight a whole, uh, just a, a low level things, and you're a, it's like a D and D term in you know Dungeons and Dragons where. You enter a room and there's a bunch of level 1 goblins, but you're a level 20 guy and you're just going to run in there and like it's just going to take one attack and you're just going to cleave the whole room and it's just going to be blood and guts all over the place and it's going to look like Chunky Souls. That's what that means. That's what this appears to be. You're probably just going to run through these guys like nothing, cutting them up, blood and guts everywhere as you run through these really small hallways. Yeah, this looks a lot more like Warhammer Quest if you've played that or seen it played. 
where these small rooms, not not so much this or in request had hallways, which are dungeon tiles about this this big normal dungeon tile thing, and then you put a door in a door, or they'd have uh, a big square room. So uh, so there was crossroads and T's too. So that is Nightmare Ram. Looks very awesome. This one is uh, one that I backed. I did back this one right away. Why I did that was because I know it has been being worked on for so long and it probably is pretty refined and probably feels pretty good. Hence why they've taken bits of it and put them in other expansions. So I would assume just that, that alone, knowing that it has been being worked on for a long time, it's probably pretty refined. Knowing, well, I didn't know when I backed it originally, but um, now knowing that pieces of it have been moved to other monsters, uh, the one in, it's the Black Knight now has the dungeon has a dungeon crawl aspect of it too, so uh, pretty good. Again, it, this is a node. Uh, it doesn't say what node this was. Let me go back. Did it say what node to expect this is? Uh, content pitch subject to change. Really, it doesn't label what node this is? Odd. Not even on its pitch here, it doesn't say what node this is? Okay, so you just have to speculate as to what node this is going to be. Uh, should I Google it real quick? I'm sure somewhere it's probably been said what node this is. This reads to me like a node 2, not a node 1. Not going to have a uh, prologue. Might even be in node 3. I'm not 100% familiar with the node thing because... I, I mean, it's just speculating. From what my understanding is, node 1 is... Node 1 is weird because some things are labeled node 1 without a prologue, and some of them have prologues, so it should be, there should be like a prologue node and node 1. I don't know. Anyway, Gorm is node 1, White Lion is node 1, Crimson Croc is node 1. Uh, Crimson Croc, or well, the Gorm doesn't have a prologue anymore, so Frog Dog I know is also node 1, we'll talk about that, but Frog Dog will also have a prologue. I don't know if it will come with a prologue, but we'll talk about it. So this feels like a node 2 to me. Um, node 2 is a Screaming Antelope, uh, Spidercules. Node 3 would be currently like the Phoenix, so Node 3 would also probably be where Dung Beetle Knight would fall. Node 2 would be where like Flower Knight would fall. I know some people say that it depends on the year that it's introduced. I guess, I don't know, Nodes, I don't think there's any current campaigns that introduce monsters in Lantern Year 7. Um, they always introduce them later, but there's no Node 4, because Lion God's also in Node 3 with the Phoenix, and so is Dung Beetle Knight, but they get introduced at different times. I think Lion God should be pushed back to being a Node 4. Node 4 seems to be... See, but I don't know if the King is qualified as a Node 5, but the King appears, we've just talked about it in the Gambler's Chest, appears that he enters with the awake, Awaited One, in Young Lantern Year 21, which would be after the Gambler, awaited, it says like the Awaited One, which would be the King, which I don't know if the King's in Node 4 or Node 5, but that would suggest that Node 5 gets entered in Lantern Year 20. So, the Node system's up for debate until the Campaigns of Death really finalizes it, but you could predict where it would be in the Nodes. This one, I don't know where it doesn't say. I'm surprised it doesn't say. Uh, I'll just assume it's a node 2. Probably replaces antelopes around that power level. Maybe it's a node 3. I don't think anything suggests that this would be replacing, uh, like, Lion God or Dung Beetle Knight. They're not that high. Nothing suggests that it would be that high. Um, seems like the kind of thing you want to be fighting over and over, judging that it has a lot of gear cards and settlement events. So I would assume, hopefully, it would be like Gorm. I don't know how many of them are going to be like Gorm, where they persistently level up and get stronger and there's better rewards. Gorm's a really good one. Hopefully, Wave 4 expansions all are like Gorm. So, that's Nightmare Ram. Let's scroll down. Again, I'm not going to talk about these pinups. 
There's Dung Beetle Knight. So, Screaming God is next. Here we go. So obviously just hearing the sonic will, the Screaming God results in instant death. Death. <laughs> it's a given. I mean, just look at its majesty. We will check out its majesty, don't you worry. However, uh, it's the bioluminescent lantern parasites living in the walls of the monster's lungs that are the real problem. The screaming God, God's lungs absorb carbon dioxide that also feeds the parasites. When the god screams, it, ex it exhales oxygen-rich phosphor phosphorescent breath that explodes, propelling the parasites along the sonic waves, infecting anything that vibrates with the sound of the monster's wail. Okay, and the Screaming God has survived as a host to these parasites for untold time and has learned to form its giant, muscled, mu <laughs> giant muscled tongue into a funnel aiming a beam of parasites traveling through its emanating scream, turning the god into a galloping, screaming, oxygen-igniting, parasite-carrying laser cannon with a frequency that liquefies brains. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Length parasites feed on the ex exhaled byproducts of healthy lungs and can carry and can lay dormant for extended periods, when they are um, dormant, they reproduce, swelling in size, filling up with new tiny parasites until they are strangely attractive bulbous shapes filled with a warm glow of twinkling lights. Inevitably, when they are disturbed, they explode, projecting tiny parasites outward to find the warm breath of a new host. There they will feed all over again until you cough, sneeze, or laugh too hard. As the parasites reproduce in a survivor's lung, breathing becomes harder and harder. They begin to see euphoric hallucinations beckoning them. The wheezing survivors that last long enough leave the settlement, chasing beautifully illuminated men or women carrying lanterns into the darkness. And so the poor host travels, summoned all the way to the source, to the queen lantern parasites where a boogering beyond description goes down. Content pinch. <laughs> one screaming god, it's huge, it's 100 millimeters. Four screaming god armor, uh, one lantern parasite queen, one illuminated lady, one illuminated man, 120 game cards, one settlement location, two settlement events, 16 page rule book, and 40 gear cards and more. That's the original pitch on the Kickstarter. So, I proudly present the Screaming God, a Lantern Year 20 monster. So this would suggest it would replace the king as a quarry. Uh, I, don't, I don't It should be Lantern Year 21, unless I was wrong and the gambler's chest had Lantern Year 19. I can't remember now. But Lantern Year 20 should be the core nemesis fight. You shouldn't be adding a secondary story event. Should, that should be your core. It should be climactic when you fight that. When the, when the Lantern Horde awakens and you have to fight the Watcher, that should be climactic. shouldn't be like, oh, the Lantern Horde's awakening. Yeah, but there's a screaming god out there that's even way better. Screw that guy. Just don't pay any attention to him. Besides, the game's going to go on for like 33% more of the game we still have to play where you just fight nothing and then some dude just appears and kills us. Anyway, screaming god, did you see that? Okay, let's fight the Watcher and we'll handle that. It's like so anticlimactic. So Lantern Year 20, it should be Lantern Year 21 that these quarries get added after you fight your core. <laughs> That's when it looked like it was added for the Gambler's Chest. It said the awaited one was after the core nemesis fight. Lantern Year 20, I'm assuming you start Lantern Year 20, you replace the core nemesis fight with the first hero, then Lantern Year 21 you add Screaming God. It says right here, same thing, Lantern Year 20 monster with a whole slew of cool things. Read below. I forgot to mention this big image that has uh, the first few cards of the first hero expansion. This just lets you use the first hero expansion and jump right to Lantern Year 20. If you beat the hero, of course, and get to hunting the screaming god right away. So less Lantern Year 20, I guess, is a special encounter. That's the only way you could have multiple things. But I would think that... whatever. Here's that whole thing I just read. Blah, blah, blah. It says differently. No, it's the same thing. Custom campaign node number five. So that is fifth number five. So that would make it a node one would be something that has a prologue, I assume. I don't know. Nodes, thing still needs work. 
So Kingdom Monster is a big game and expansions. When you're setting up your campaign and deciding which monsters to include, you typically shall lean to one of each node. Number five is a little special because you can only you can only have one per campaign. Streaming God expansion extends your campaign by five years, pushing back the Gold Smoke Knight. It allows well wait what this pushes it to a thirty five year. That's again debatable because the king is a node five and he doesn't push uh, the god or god hand to thirty five. So must have all changed. Um, Parasite Lucky Challenge lan uh, Parasite Lantern Parasite Queen. Talk more about nodes another time. Okay, so there it is. Uh, this thing's actually already been for sale. You can buy them. It looks really cool. Uh, scrolling past all that quickly. Some more stuff. Lantern Parasite Queen. Okay, that was the original pitch. Um, he also has one here. Screaming God. Here's the next, a newer update. Screaming God armor has been renamed the Alpha Armor. For higher level armors sets, we are pushing for stronger, simpler abilities. Late gameplay can get fairly complex, so we're dialing up to strong and dialing down the fuss. It's a very good choice. Currently testing the completed helm, giving all non-death survivors on the showdown board double dash, so long as the alpha armor survivor is alive, of course. Of course. There's the alpha armor, it looks very cool. Alpha armor again. Looks cool. Very cool. Cool, cool. Cool stuff. Female alpha armor. I mean, this, yeah, so you put a female head on it. Otherwise, I couldn't really tell. Uh, the Hunter's Lodge. Stream God. and scroll past this fast. Just. So, currently testing version 8. So, just, this has also been available at Gen Con. There's videos on YouTube of people playing Streaming God. Streaming God is one of those ones that has already been tested. So, uh, it should be complete, but you never know, because things could change now that Gambler's Chest is coming out before everything else and changes up with Advanced Kingdom Death. Because Wave 4 has been delayed so much, Wave 4 should incorporate all that stuff. So, hopefully it does. So this is just a trait. Again, this it's been played. It's a very cool showdown. Uh, I didn't happen to see any of these rebounding collisions and stuff, but yeah, it's a very cool showdown from what it was. This is what it looked like at, at Gen Con even, where these things here, you know, they would. It's like a moving wall. Every one of its turn, it's it it chases you down, or you're chasing it down as you fight it. It's trying to run away from you, and you're dodging in between these walls that it's just running past. Here's some of its resources. Reese, cool. Cool, cool. Awesome. Just resources. Just fine. These, I mean, this just proves how far along it should be. But then again, this is a 2018 update. So, you know, two years old update and still no word on anything Wave 4. So, just to be fair. To be fair. When Kingdom Death Monster, the original one, shipped... It was only like a couple months before all the expansions got out. So it's very possible, I don't think, I think it's unlikely, that's just my opinion, but it's very possible, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt so it doesn't sound like I'm being negative all the time, it is possible, he did do it in the original Kickstarter, that once Campaigns of Death, once Wave 3 ships, maybe he's got a lot of this stuff a lot farther than he's leaning on. Maybe we will see this within a year or two, but... I'm expecting not. I'm not even expecting Campaigns of Death till 22. So. Uh, here's the Parasite Queen. That is included with the... Uh, this is just Death Armor, so that's something else. Uh, I thought there was more. This is just Death Armor. I think there's Frog Dog. Yeah, okay. So we're... Ah, here is Screaming God more. Screaming God was a tough design. I uh, can't even take credit for the showdown in motion idea. That was one of the designers on the team. I recall being really excited and really scared about how we make it all work. No showdown to date has had any as many revisions as this one, but I'm very proud as to where it is now. Okay. I would have thought that, you know, if you're already done with this one and this one hasn't seen as many revisions, that things would be moving faster. Again, this is a 2018 update. Uh, this one might be 2019. 
There's a showdown that takes place in perpetual motion. So yeah, here's the screaming god. This is what I was just talking about. Yeah, so you see the thing's running away from you and there's these walls. And as the walls go, as it runs, you put the wall. This is just symbolic of it. These are antelopes that are chasing it. So as you see, as you put the walls down, you take them off the board, draw another card, place them down where they're supposed to be, and then you set them on its way. And it just rotates as you play along on the board. Like these things come towards you, you move the animal forward, move the walls towards the survivors, then to take your turn, you have to bob and weave in between them, slalom in between them as you will. Uh, it looked like a very cool showdown that you can already see. There's video of it on Gen Con. Um, very cool. Streaming God again. This is 100% plastic. I think this one's already been for sale on the store sometime within the last year or so. Awesome. So there's the Gen Con demo. There it is, what I was talking about with the walls. Move them. They go. This is not included at all. This was just a total 100% waste of time just for them to show off the, uh, how, how cool. Make it more thematic as you're live playing it, but I guess this, that's the wall of antelope that will kill you if the walls get to you. They're breaking the walls, I guess. I don't know. I guess they're breaking the walls as they run through them, behind them. Otherwise, they would get picked off by the walls. And yet the screaming guide can't break walls. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Either way, very cool. I like the antelopes. They look cool. Uh, here's the Parasite Queen. Again, looks like this. Actually rendered, I think. I don't know how the Parasite Queen will actually work. Maybe it replaces the Gold Smoke Knight, or it's just something that you fight at the end of a level 3. Don't know. Uh, these are the illuminated ones, so I'm going to skip past this. going to edit this out. Okay, there, I scrolled past them. That was the end of it anyway. I could have just ended it right there. Uh, so, back to Screaming God expansion. Uh, the Screaming God is one that I've also backed. Again, the reason why I got it was because it is a quarry monster. Quarry monsters, I feel, are the best and strongest parts of the game. Just because you get the most use out of them. And there's lots of gear and all kinds of cool stuff. So, that's why I usually tend to prefer quarry monsters so the screaming god is one that i did get um i don't think i backed it right away maybe i did either way i did end up getting it i think it is it's going to be worth it if you really want late game quarries um i've said many times i don't like the mass and blanket void that is the end game of the current game if this pushes it back to Lantern Year 35, to where the Gold Smoke Knight is, or if this messes with it and it's like the Parasite Queen is what comes at Lantern Year 35, I don't know. That might make the game too long, uh, and I might just use it as a quarry if you don't need to use all that other crap. Uh, I don't. I think the game is no should be nowhere near as long as it is. Nowhere near as long as it is. Um, I think it's a fun, great game that you want to replay. It's not the kind of thing you... I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with getting to the end. I don't even care that the, the story always results in death because you just play again. I love it. I play it again. But pushing it back and back and back and back, I don't think I want anything to do with a 35-year Lantern campaign. Um, I would probably ignore that. If I was doing this, I'd probably hunt it at Lantern Year 20. If it does push it back to Lantern Year 35 and it says, add Gold Smoke Knight and Lantern Year 30, then five years later fight the Paris, I'll just say no. <laughs> and I'll just fight the Paris, I'll just remove Gold Smoke Knight and fight the Parasite Queen and Lantern Year 30, perhaps. Uh, I, I don't like the game being extended very much longer. Uh, this doesn't look to overcomplicate the game. The showdown looks great. It doesn't add all kinds of crazy hijinks. Uh, that was another reason why I wanted to get it. I'm just wanted really just wanted more quarries so and something to be in the late game so that's what you can expect from the screaming god next on the list we go to i guess i can mention this so these role survivors are now just included in the lion god so that was a nice update uh now we go to frog dog so let me get all the stuff open for frog dog so, this is another new expansion. Again, content pitch, subject to change. Again, I'm just going right down the Kickstarter main page, the campaign page, if you want to follow along. Uh, so you get one Frog Dog Miniature, two Cesspond Survivors, 
two pond scum armor narrative sculpts, two frog dog armor narrative sculpts, two ancient frog dog armor narrative sculpts, four cesspond game board tiles, 120 game cards, two settlement locations, two settlement events, 16 page pool rule book, 60 gear cards, and more. So awesome. Here's the actual update where it came in. This is a brand new expansion. There's the frog dog. So the cesspond at the base of the inverted mountain is filled with an eternal rain of filth and death that runs off the inverted slope above. This is the habitat of the frog dog. This is a place of impressive and improbable life which vegetation that will fertilize your foot then steal it from you. Amidst the mire of foul smalls there is one stench that is king above them all for it is so potent it actually broadens your life perspective. Cultures that grow near the cultures that grow near the cesp pond develop many words for unpleasant aromas, but only the frog dog scent is considered a curse word. The frog dog has unique pads on the other side of its. Anyway, so basically, this is a node one, and I'm just gonna say it now, just because we're talking about it, um, and we'll talk about it later, but. This, the, cess the cess pond at the base of the Inverted Mountain. So there's an Inverted Mountain campaign, which we'll talk about later, and the Inverted Mountain campaign kind of pitches that the Frog Dog will be the prologue of that campaign. So that kind of means that either in the Inverted Mountain it will include a prologue for the Frog Dog, or this Node 1 comes with a prologue. Unlike Gorm, which is a Node 1, it doesn't include a prologue, and it's supposed to in Campaigns of Death, but then he said he wasn't doing that. I don't know why, we've already talked about it, but either way, this appears that it might be an alternative uh, prologue, which is great. I don't think it will be included in the expansion itself. It will probably be included in Inverted Mountain, so we'll talk about that later. But I'm just saying the options there, and I want to, since we're talking about Frog Dog now, we'll say it. So, Frog Dog, again, see Custom Campaign Node 1. Uh, if you read this, you get two Cesspond Miniature Survivors, two pond scum armor sculpts, two frog dog armor, and two ancient frog dog. So, to me, this reads like a Gorm. This reads exactly what like a Gorm is going to be played like. If you have uh, like people of the sun or people of the stars, those, uh, or I should just say the Dragon King and the Sunstalker expansions, they included two like just blanket survivors. Uh, there was two in the Dragon King, they had spears, and there was one female, one male, and then in the Sunstalker, one female, like, priestess, Japanese, like, priestess, but she had the bow, and then the other, there was another guy, I forget what he, he was, had a spear or something. Either way, that's what I feel these are probably going to be, uh, indicating that, you know, it's probably going to be there, so the Inverted Mountain campaign doesn't need to include them, whereas, like, Campaigns of Death is including those, um, intimacy couples, for people of the stars and people of the sun. I think this will probably be those. That's what this reads to me as. The Pond Scum Armor Narrative Sculpts and Frog Dog Armor and Ancient Frog Dog Armor. You get two of each one, so that means you get six kits. Uh, this reads like a Gorm to me. Literally, level one, level two, level three. Uh, the Gorm kind of has this. Even the Gorm level three itself is actually called Ancient Gorm. So, Ancient Frog Dog. And the Gorm itself has the regeneration suit and just regular Gorm armor. So, you know, there's versatility in the type of thing you build. So this is just screaming Gorm to me, uh, which is awesome. I was hoping that you're going to copy. If you were to look at all the expansions that happened in the original Kickstarter, Gorm and Dung Beetle Knight would be the ones that you I would look to for quarry monsters. Uh, Gorm, more specifically, Gorm is just a great thing to copy. If you were going to copy it and say this is the standard moving up forward, it's a great pick, and that's what this seems like to me. This seems like a Gorm for Node 1. So here we have some pictures of the frog dog. Here's the armor. Again, there's no sculpts of these yet, but there they are. Neat. Um, see that some. So here's another frog dog expansion. Found the best way to make the frog dog's lethal farts a centerpiece of the showdown. You'll have to scroll down a bit to see exactly what I mean. Okay. Frog Dog was demoed at Gen Con 2019, I think it was. So there are videos out there where you can watch them. They're on YouTube. I think Twist Gaming played them. Great. Good job for them. I don't know if Frog Dog was a public demo. Uh, Black Knight and Screaming God in Gen Con 2018 were public demos. I think Frog Dog might have just been something they did just for Twitch Gaming. I don't know if it was a public demo. Anyway, uh, so you can see how that plays. 
Uh, I don't know if it's the best representation of it because they were getting some rules wrong. Um, so, uh, I don't know. It's hard to say because I don't think the people who demo those games necessarily are working for Kingdom Death. They're working for Gen Con and then they quickly learn the game. So they were probably letting things slide. Even in the uh, the Gen Con Screaming God one, you know, that was a public game. People... Kingdom Death is super fiddly anyway, so when teaching, trying to teach it to someone in like 20 minutes is never going to happen, even if you're playing a vignette. So, it's understandable. People will probably, they, they just, you know, they probably just want to move it along, turn tables, as they would say, in like a restaurant, so. Uh, it's, it's a, so you, you take those Gen Con videos for what they are, but they do show the mechanics. Uh, we'll scroll down here, just go through as I talk. So the mechanics of the frog dog did include that fart deck thing, and it looked like you were... Just didn't look, it looked really fiddly. Um, I don't know, the fart deck's kind of, here's fart deck. It's kind of weird, kind of stupid, but I mean, I don't know. Uh, it is what it is. I, I'm i not a huge fan of it. Stupid name, stupid, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know why, really. I mean, it's a frog, the frog's fart. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Dogs farting, I guess. So frog dog. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's just kind of stupid. But either way, um, it looks good, except for the fiddliness of it when they were playing. So you can always watch those. The video for Frog Dog. There's also one for Screaming God. I, I know I mentioned it, but you can see them on YouTube. I don't have any of them. <laughs> I've never played them. But um, to me... So that's pretty much most... Oh, here, I'll go back to the... The only other thing for Frog Dog was here is some of his resources, which are good. So, to me, Frog Dog reads like Gorm. A lot like the Gorm, and there's a possibility that it might have a prologue, which makes it even better. Uh, Gorm is awesome. Gorm is exactly what you want from an expansion. So I had backed this even just from the pitch alone because it sounded like a Gorm. Um, and Gorm always gets high praise from everybody... And it really is really cool. Uh, I saw during that video you could see how the frog dog armor or the yeah the armor and the weapons kind of work. And it seems like you gain bonuses based on if there was a critical hit location. I didn't. Uh, I should have watched the video, but I, from what I remember, you gain bonuses is if the hit location you're trying to wound has a critical, you can gain luck or gain strength. I forget, but. There's bonuses there, and that seems to be the mechanic for how it works, and that seemed to be how the armor and the weapons seem to work. Uh, I think there was even a goggles that acted like Rawhide headband, I think, or like, uh, not Rawhide headband, like uh, Cat Eye Circlet. So that's also cool. So I think Frog Dog's a great, uh, a great pitch. Uh, I'm really excited for Frog Dog. I think it's definitely one you should definitely consider, even if you don't want to get Inverted Mountain, because it is a part of that. I think it'd be great even without the prologue, but it's nice that it's possible that there might be one. So, Frog Dog, yeah, Frog Dog is great. I think it's one of the, it's probably, I don't know if it's going to be the best one out of all these expansions, but I would not doubt if Frog Dog remains in like the top three. Especially since, well, see, the other thing, if First Hero was out or something, a lot of the problems with a lot of these expansions is a lot of the content just doesn't get used because it's so late in the game and a lot of people don't get to play it so often that they experience it over and over and over. Like, you know, some level threes, you only fight them a couple times, and then if you only play with them once and you move on to another expansion, you might never get to do it. Whereas the level ones, you're gonna fight them over and over and over and over and over and over and over. You fight them a lot. Then if you even if you die halfway through your campaign, you start again. Then it's back to level one, level one, level one ones. So you get a lot of repeat use. But that's what makes the Gorm and apparently, or at least likely, the Frog Dog will be one of those ones that goes along. Now I have a Gorm review on the channel here, and I talk about that it was one of my favorite things. How level one Gorm. Level 2 Gorm, Level 3 Gorm, all have different stories, 
they all progress throughout the whole thing. You hunt them throughout the entirety of a campaign for different reasons. Level 3s have increased chance of getting Gormite. Level 2, secret stuff you can get, fighting art related and stuff. Level 1s, because the axe is so strong right away, the wisdom potion. And then there's like their own uh, innovations, so you keep fighting them. You're incentivized to fight them again because of the uh, Gorm climate. So you want to clear up the Gorm climate. Level 2, same thing. You want to go in and out because you're incentivized to, to fight him repeatedly to try to get those boons from going in and out of the uh, miasma and stuff. And then the level 3 because the increased chance of Gormite and the Black Sword's awesome. Even in Endgame. So it's like you know, a, a node one quarry that travels with you throughout the entire game, and that's what this feels like. That's what it, it's pitched like, and that's what it will feel like, so I'm all on board for that, for Frog Dog. Awesome. Let's see what we have up next. Again, uh... Oh, okay, we can talk about Wanderers. I should just talk about them right now. I, I shouldn't... I'm, I'm just going to... Just because I can see right now. Man, again, this is going to be a long video. I'm going to have to cut this in half, probably. I'm not going to get through all of them. Um, let's just talk about Wanderers. So right here, you got Lantern, your three candy, and cola. Uh, let's just look at my cheat sheet here. What are the other Wanderers? Uh, Goth Amy, a zombie side crossover. Pathfinder is a death a crossover with Pathfinder. And the Death Drifter was another crossover, I think, with one of his uh, artists or something. That's why it was there. Uh, and then there's False Messenger, which I put, like, a question mark next to. The False Messengers were originally included in Kickstarter 1 as promo minis, like stretch goal minis. But now they're getting, uh, like, you can buy them all, the four of them, and they'll have a little story attached to them. Kind of, I'm just throwing them in there because it kind of feels like maybe that will be the Wanderer system, or maybe they won't be, maybe it'll be their own little thing. Either way, it's just minis with a very small amount of content pitched. Same thing here with Candy and Cola. This is a Lantern Year 3 Wanderer. Wanderer system's awesome. I love the Wanderer system. Uh, just just the fact that it adds just a small little bit, and it makes the world like come more alive. I love thematic things that make the world feel more alive. That's why I liked um, People of Lantern. I think I'm I think it's rare that people like People of Lantern as one of their favorite campaigns. I like People of the Lantern because narratively it all had kind of fit. The Butcher, they explained him, and you get the White Speaker events and all those things that happen. You know, explained Forsaker. It, everything in People of the Lantern feels like it's creating lore and tying together. So you get to the Goldsmoke Knight, Goldsmoke Knight kind of just shows up and you know, I'll explain him. Goldsmoke Knight, stuff for that. But. Aside from that, it felt like a cohesive story. The Kingsman was leading up to the king. The Hand was used to be an agent of the king. Now this stuff has all changed, which for the worse, I think. But the Watcher being the thing that is holding, you know, at bay, lighting up the dark world and all that stuff. All those things were cool. The Twilight Order, they were out to kill Watchers and stuff. Uh, all those things were thematically. And that's what these wanderers feel. They're just something you just throw in and it's like, hey, look, there's another person from another settlement. What are they here? Are they good? Are they evil? What are they doing? Should we help them? Should we be scared? It's also why I liked um, the uh, Vix, uh, ring-tailed vixen or whatever. The one that gives you the, the one that gives you the baby bookmark where if you roll in a one on intimacy then you can find a baby in a basket that bookmark i like that just stuff that makes the world feel more alive and the wanderer system huge i love that the wanderer system is just a good idea in general for even the white boxes you could have all these um echoes of death all the echoes each one of these you could give them all their own wanderer moving forward wanderer story moving forward the wanderers have their own book it says there's probably three or three events, I think it said, or something that will add to the timeline, which is why I got the, um, which is why I, when we were talking about gam Gambler's Chest, why I really liked Luck, um, because he was a Lantern Year 20, he fills that blanket void. So here they are, you got the Candy and Cola, Goth Amy, you can look at them, I don't want to scroll through all of them. Pathfinders of Death, I think I have Pathfinders, Pathfinders of Death was in one of these. Pathfinders of Death is just crossover with Pathfinder. Um, of all these Wanderers, here's Pathfinders of Death, I knew it was really close. Of all these Wanderers and stuff, I think I just wanted, I only backed Pathfinders of Death. That's the only one that I actually got. Uh, 
just because there's four of them and the minis I knew the minis were going to be good because they're based on you know the artwork that they're based on is similar and the world is you know it's a Dungeons and Dragons world I mean I know it's a Pathfinder world but Pathfinder's based on 3.5 it's pretty much a lifted 3.5 exactly so um you know that that you know the, the world like that it, it kind of felt like it fit and so I got this one this is the only one I got. I didn't get Candy and Cola. I didn't get the other ones. I didn't get the False Messengers. I thought about getting False Messengers and stuff, but I just figured I'd get the one, and that way if the Wanderer system suck, I didn't invest heavily into it. I don't think it will suck. I think it will be great. That's just one of the reasons why I got this one. It was the mo It was the easiest way to get the most Wanderers, and these are pitched. All four of them are supposed to be Wanderers, and they're all supposed to have their own story. Uh, I think they even might have said that there might be... A party there might be a party i don't know either way wanderers i'm all for them plus um checking time on this yep again apparently i'm just not good at doing this very fast so i'm gonna have to break this again i don't want to make super long videos so i'm gonna have to break this again probably and do another one let's see so we've got next what's on the list i think it said oblivion mosquito yes so i'll have to stop i'll start again We've got Oblivion Mosquito to go through, Pariah to go through, Super Survivors to go through, Griffin to go through, Black Knight, Red Witches, Death Armor, False Messengers, Inverted Mountain Campaign, Silver City Expansion, Honeycomb Weaver, Ivory Dragon, and Abyssal Woods. Man, we've got so much stuff to go through. Am I talking slow? I feel like I'm talking like I need water. I feel like I'm talking so fast. I'm trying to get through this as much as I can. I'm trying to just give you as much opinion as I can, as much info dump as, I fa as fast as I can. <laughs> And I feel like it's still taking me forever. Granted, this is like four years worth of con uh, updates that I've never covered. All these content updates, all these updates, all these things, I've never talked about them. So I am trying to cover four years worth of stuff. Whew. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to stop. I don't have any more time left. Uh, it looks like what I originally said was going to be three videos. I'm hoping now it's going to be probably four videos. Whew. Okay. One more, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. It's so very humbling, and I honestly, truly do mean that. I know it's how I close every single video, and you probably think, oh, he's, that's just his outro. No, I, I truly do mean that. It is so very humbling. Hopefully this is enjoyable. I feel like I'm getting better at doing it. I don't have downtime. I'm trying to go fast. We're going to cover it. We're going to make it. We're going to go all the way through. We're going to get them all covered. Hopefully this is super informative. I can't see the comments. I've all been doing this all at one time. Uh, I still have to make... An, I'm going to do a channel update video. I was going to do that right now. You know what? Maybe what I'm going to do... I don't have enough time. It looks like what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have to stop here. I'm going to pick up and make a channel update video. And then I'm going to finish the rest of these. So, thank you so much for watching. So very humbling. We're going to make through it. We're going to get through it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.